Do you have a Facebook? Have you thought about the privacy you put at risk? The Facebook allows users to post their favorite music, books, movies, their address, hometown, phone number, email, clubs, jobs, educational history, birth dates, sexual orientation, interests, daily schedules, exactly how they are related to friends, upload pictures of themselves, and even political affiliations. Its privacy policy even goes so far as to state it also collects information about you from other sources, such as newspapers and instant messaging services. This information is gathered regardless of your use of the website. Think that's scary? The Facebook's term of service state, by posting member content to any part of the website, you automatically grant and you represent and warrant that you have the right to grant to Facebook an irrevocable, perpetual, non-exclusive, transferable, fully paid, worldwide license with the right to sublicense to use, copy, perform, display, reformat, translate, excerpt in whole or in part, and distribute such information and content, and to prepare derivative works of or incorporate into other works such information and content, and to grant and authorize sublicenses of the foregoing. Have you seen the Facebook's Pulse feature? Pulse provides statistical trends among universities down to minute details such as percentages of females with conservative views, the student body's top 10 movies, and percentage of students who have read Catcher in the Rye. The so-called privacy policy goes on to say that they may share your information with third parties, including responsible companies with which they have a relationship. Can you think of any marketing group who would pass up buying such valid yet easily collected statistics such as these and others? So maybe they're using us. But is there more? The first venture capital money totaled at $500,000 came to the Facebook from venture capitalist Peter Thiel, founder and former CEO of PayPal. He also serves on the board of radical conservative group Vanguard PAC. Further funding came in the form of $12.7 million from venture capital firm Excel Partners. Excel's manager, James Breyer, was former chair of the National Venture Capital Association. Breyer served in the National Venture Capital Association's board with Gilman Louie, CEO of InQtel, a venture capital firm established by the Central Intelligence Agency in 1999. This firm works in various aspects of information technology and intelligence, including, most notably, nurturing data mining technologies. Breyer has also served on the board of BBN Technologies, a research and development firm known for spearheading the ARPANET, or what we know today as the Internet. In October of 2004, Dr. Anita Jones climbed on board BBN, along with Gilman Louie. But what is most interesting is Dr. Jones' experience prior to joining BBN. Jones herself served on the board of directors for InQtel, and was previously the director of defense research and engineering for the U.S. Department of Defense. Her responsibilities included serving as an advisor to the Secretary of Defense and overseeing the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. This goes farther than just the initial appearances. DARPA shot to national fame in 2002 when knowledge of the existence of the Information Awareness Office came to light. The IAO stated its mission was to gather as much information as possible about everyone in a centralized location for easy perusal by the United States government, including though not limited to internet activity, credit card purchase history, airline ticket purchases, car rentals, medical records, educational transcripts, driver's licenses, utility bills, tax returns, and any other available data. All of the above raises more questions than answers. Perhaps if the Facebook wishes to stay ethically sane, it should enact the policy. What happens in the Facebook stays in the Facebook.